Uh, 13 minutes past eight. The Supreme Court is ruling today on whether disabled travellers should be legally entitled to the priority use of wheelchair spaces on buses, even when there are babies in buggies on board. This case was triggered when wheelchair user Doug Pawley attempted to board a bus in Leeds back in 2012, but was unable to do so when a woman refused to move her buggy. Our disability correspondent Nikki Fox reports. What began as one man trying to catch a bus has turned into a nearly five-year legal battle in a bid to clarify a grey area when it comes to wheelchair spaces on buses. Thank you. Back in 2012, Doug was unable to catch a bus because the space for wheelchairs was taken by a mum with a pushchair. She refused to move, which meant Doug couldn't get on. His case centred around the bus company First Group and their policy of requesting, not requiring, someone to move out of the wheelchair space if the disabled person wants to get on. It's such a big issue for disabled people. It's pointless having fully accessible bus services when, in fact, people can't use the spaces. Today's final ruling at the Supreme Court could have much wider implications that stretch even further than public transport. It's amazing and so few cases make it to the Supreme Court and it's the first time that it's ever had a case about rights of access to goods and services for disabled people. Yeah, I never thought that, that back five years ago when I tried to catch that bus that we'd still be talking about it now. If found in Doug's favour, it would mean that any company or service provider with a space designed for disabled people would need to make sure they're prioritised for disabled people. If not, they could open themselves up to legal action. Nikki Fox, BBC News. Well, it's so interesting. So many of you getting in touch. Thank you for those uh, the comments. Uh, we're going to talk about it now with Sarah Marle, who joins us uh, from our studio here. Morning to you. Lovely to see you. And in our London newsroom is Keith Richards, uh, Chair of the Disabled Persons Transport Advisory Committee. Morning both. Sarah, so oh, yeah. many people getting in touch with that, us about this morning. Uh, from your point of view, you, you work, you have mm -hmm. to get to work, um, you try to get on buses. What are the kind of particular issues that you find? Um, I mean, getting on the bus isn't just the issue. Actually, getting to the bus stop is um, it's always like a logistical nightmare. But then, obviously, then the bus will park near the pavement. Is it near enough so they can put the ramp out? When you get on the bus, is there a lot of people? Um, there's a lot of issues when you actually try and use public transport. And it's not just buses, it's trains too. And in this particular inc incident, I mean, you know, it, it's come to this now, hasn't it? Um, do you think it is something that is worth pursuing, though, this fact that perhaps disabled people should have a special place which is reserved for them? Absolutely, and disabled people have fought for a long time to get um, the, uh, space on a bus, let alone, um, you know, have to fight it out with somebody else. So actually having choice and independence for disabled people is a huge issue. Yeah. Keith, can I, relating specifically to this case, I mean, First Group's current policy states that where a pushchair or buggy is occupying the space, a driver will ask that it's repositioned. They also make the point, though, that the driver has no power to compel passengers to move in this way and is reliant upon the goodwill of passengers concerned. Unfortunately, they say, if a fellow passenger refuses to move the wheelchair, user will need to wait for the next bus. You, you, you could argue that they are merely following policy on this. They are, but I think the issue really is what are the bus companies' policies because they, they, there are a range of different policies across the country. I think if you come back to basics, and this is what this case was all about, there is already a legal requirement and regulations to provide physical access to buses. So it's not just about the width of the doorways and ramps, it's actually about a designated wheelchair accessible space. That's what the regulations call it, so each bus, low floor bus, has to have that space. If then in practice there becomes a battle between the person who, for whom that space is designated, the wheelchair user, and everybody else who might want to use it, that includes passengers wanting to stand there on a busy bus, people with luggage, people with children in buggies, it then becomes a very practical battle about over the use of that very limited space. But you come back to the basics of the law, the law says that is should be a wheelchair designated space. The practical issue then becomes who's going to enforce that, and that's up to the driver. So if we don't have properly trained drivers who understand what the needs of disabled people are, but also are prepared to have the conversation with the people who may be in that space who are not wheelchair users and take whatever steps are reasonably necessary to try and get them to move so that the wheelchair user can occupy that space, that becomes a very 
problematic issue day to day on a day to day basis for people with wheelchair users. There's no consistency and there's no confidence that that space will be usable. Mm, it's very interesting, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, in some ways, you know, if, if they were given the power to make people move, you know, how do you enforce it? Mm. it it's all. It, 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 it sort of seems so ridiculous to get to this point, doesn't it, when somebody just yes. won't move when they're being asked to? Absolutely, and those are all the arguments that have been um, put before the Supreme Court, and they've already been aired in the previous court. The first court case, Doug Pawley won, and was, was awarded compensation for injury to feelings. Court of Appeal overturned that. The Supreme Court, well, we'll wait and see. It's to be hoped that uh, Doug Pawley, having been persistent in bringing the case, the first type of case like this, to the Supreme Court, will win, but... Having said that, you are absolutely right. What is really needed is a really fresh look at the design of buses, so there's much more flexibility around the space that's available, so it's not just one limited amount of space. It's the possibility to use other space. It's about properly trained drivers who are prepared to do whatever they need to do to encourage people to move. And it's also making sure that passengers who are occupying that space are fully aware that that space is the only space available to people in wheelchairs. They have no other options, whereas most other passengers do. Sarah, can I put to you some of the comments we've been getting? Louise was saying those people are getting in contact. Nicola, wheelchairs should definitely get the priority. When my little children, when my children were little, that we didn't have a choice. People used to help us get on, either hold the baby or the pushchair for you. Sarah says, what if your child is also disabled and uses a wheelchair that looks like a pushchair? Mandy says, we can't get out of wheelchairs like babies and toddlers. Uh, can be helped out of theirs. Many, many times I've waited on buses in Leeds only to be told that there are pushchairs on and the driver politely asks someone to move, but they get the same answer my buggy or my pushchair doesn't fold down and then you get the other point of view which I'll put to you um, Elaine says first come first serve so it's fair for everyone yeah it's interesting and actually most of our lives as disabled people is relying on the goodwill of other people and that includes the custom service of bus operators train operators and it, it comes to something actually when other people won't move for you when actually you've had pretty difficult day all round and actually getting on a bus is just one of the issues you have to go through in your everyday life so um, It'd be nice if other people had a bit of thought about disabled people getting onto buses. Sarah Marr, thank you very much for your time this morning. Also, mm -hmm. thank you to Keith Richard as well. Thank you.